So before starting, um, I'd like to thank Valerie and everyone at the museum at FIT for giving me this wonderful opportunity to present my paper here in New York. So let's get started. Pink is a color with long history in Japan. As in many Western cultures, to contemporary Japanese eyes, pink is first and foremost symbolic of a girly aesthetic, as indicated by these images with highly girly styles that come in um, pink. But pink has several connotations in Japan. <laughs> yep. So, for example, uh, these are images of Japanese married couple who are also specialized in um, Japanese traditional bubble entertainment called rakugo, and they are always, almost always, um, dressed in pink. And the pink in men's fashion also has a long and varied history in Japanese culture. So my talk today focuses on the many faces of pink in Japan, from ancient to early modern period, as well as women's and men's fashion. One of the most notable appearances of pink in historical Japan is in the literature of Heian period, which lasted roughly from 794 to 1185. In the Heian court, the art of matching colors was especially important in men's and women's dress and a woman's skill in selecting clothes, particularly in combining colors, was considered a fundamental measure of her character and charm, much more important than her physical features. Colors were combined by layering back then. The combination called rose plum, for example, layered over pink, a kimono over lavender or crimson one. And this cult of beauty is well narrated in Murasaki Shikibu or Lady Murasaki's The Tale of Genji, written um, in the 11th century and regarded as one of the oldest romance novels in the history of literature. Prince Genji, the protagonist of the novel, is just as beautiful as his name, Shining Prince, suggests and he has to have an immaculate sense of style and fashion to be considered beautiful back then. And the first part of the novel is devoted to his romantic adventures. In one scene, he becomes the center of attention when he attends a cherry blossom viewing and demonstrates um, his immaculate sense of fashion. The kimono Prince Genji wears in this occasion is known as the layers of cherry blossom, representing delicate white flowers of cherry blossoms on young red leaves. So how sensational was that? If you think of a beautiful young man making an appearance at a social event today, wearing a pale pink dinner jacket, while all the other men were dressed in sober black, you get the idea. Here, his dazzling male beauty is both referenced and enhanced by the pink garment. So what did uh, his kimono look like? <laughs> okay. Modern textile artist Sachio Yoshioka has beautifully recreated the dress that Prince Genji wore in his cherry blossom viewing. As you can see in this picture, the semi-transparent quality of white silk or worn over a red one mimics the gradients of pale pink of the cherry blossom. The safflower dye used to create the red color was very expensive at the time, and what today we might call magenta pink was also called in the Heian period as the color of the day or the color in the latest style. In another scene um, in this literature, Prince Genji sends a set of kimono uh, to each of the women he was romantically involved with. 
Lady Murasaki, um, his most beloved of all, and not to be confused with the author, receives one in the color of the day, which looked like this. So this shows how, uh, both how the prince love for the young lady, as well as the sense of luxury and exclusivity of the color of magenta pink in ancient Japan. As in many cultures, Japanese people have many uh, names for shades of pink. From dianthus or pale pink, azalea or vivid magenta, peach or light red, and the Japanese apricot and light pink, and the list goes on. In the Edo period, which uh, lasted roughly from 1603 to 1868, until, the, until Japan reopened to the West, a shade of yellowish pink was called the maiden color. After the petals of otome camellia, otome means maiden in Japanese, and while the direct link between the flower and the little meaning of otome or maiden has been unproven, it has further contributed to the modern understanding of pink as a color associated with useful femininity. Like other co um, colors, the meanings of pink have changed according to each milieu. A famous figure of modern Japanese literature, Osamu Dazai, based the short story, he, um, which is called Schoolgirl, uh, which he published in 1939, on a diary by teenage girl Shizu Ariake. Written on the eve of World War II, the protagonist, obviously a schoolgirl, uh, reflects on an old-fashioned umbrella that belonged to her mom when she was still a girl. And this is a paragraph from Dazai's novel, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but the teenage heroine refers to a long pink dress and long gloves or black silk lace are the items she'd like to wear once the war ends and peace comes back. So here pink connotes a sense of glamour and dream in a fantasy that transcends the harsh reality and the uncertainty of war. And we should remember that indulging our dream of mostly impractical, classical elegance and beauty could be effective in countering erasing and perhaps overcoming the misery and the poverty of past and present. And during the war period, beautiful dresses and even images of feminine beauty and bright colors were highly restricted in Japan. Junichi Nakahara is a pioneer of fashion and dress specifically designed for adolescent girls both before and after the war. And he had to resign from his involvement as an illustrator and editor of fashion features for a girls' magazine called Girls' Friend in 1940. His resignation was due to government intervention and pressure from the military, who thought his highly fashionable images of young girls, which you are looking at in this slide, looked too frail and beautiful when the government was promoting images of girls that were stronger and focused on work. So the covers of a Girl's Friend changed from something like this. And this is one of um, Nakahara's last illustration for the uh, cover of Girl's Friend, um, which he did um, a few months before his re resignation in 1940 to something like this. Oop. Come on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this is the cover of the same magazine in 1944 at the height of the war. So you can see how different it became, particularly the use of color. So judging from his, um, this social historical context, the color pink at least for the teenage girl in Dazai's short story, represented an unachievable glamour, a dream in wartime Japan. 
The symbolism of the delicate pink and pale pink cherry blossom was used extensively in other ways during the war. The cherry blossom has a long association in Japan with human life and mortality due to its very short blossoming period and the way it perishes. The cherry blossom was, for example, used as a nationalist symbol or, uh, during the war. And this is a work done by another popular Japanese artist called Kashu Takabatake. And this is a very good example of how youthful uh, warrior or samurai-like masculinity was associated with the cherry blossom because they were both perishing in a beautiful and idolized way. So pink has several, several connotations in modern Japanese culture, as well as its continuing association with the innocent dreams of schoolgirls. Pink is also associated with sex and eroticism in Japan. The erotic blue movies of some Western cultures are differently colored in other countries. Such images are said to be yellow in China, green in Spain, red in Italy, and as you might have guessed, pink in Japan. Pink is associated with eroticism and particularly female genitalia in other cultures too. But the association between pink and eroticism in Japan is relatively recent. It is believed that pink was the preferred color used in the early 1900s to obscure the explicit parts of sexual images in an attempt to escape harsher censorship. The use of pink to signal erotic meanings was again evident in the example of softcore porn or sexploitation films made by minor film companies referred to in Japan as pink films from the 1960s. Well, quite different from these pink films, in the 1970s, pink in Japanese fashion culture was elevated by um, Isao Kaneko's fashion brand called Pink House, launched in 1973. While not always using the color itself, Pink House was known for creating hyperbolically freely versions of early American folkloric styles, as you can see in these images. Even Ray Kawakubo of Comedy Garçon fame, a contemporary of Kaneko and Pink House, designed a pastel colored suit with pale pink trousers in 1973, well before her revolutionary all black beginnings in the early 1980s. The period of Comedy Garçon from its inception until its involvement in the Japanese fashion revolution in the early 1980s has rarely been touched upon in discussions of the label. Perhaps, contrary to her image as highly controversial, almost aggressively provocative designer, earlier items of Kawakubo were marketed more as girlishly romantic and cute in Japan, in ja in Japan as indicated by, come on, these images both of which are, quite surprisingly, designed by Kawakubo and Comme des Garçons in around 1973. So the gentle and uplifting image of the pink trousers and other girlish designs articulate the adolescent stage of Kawakubo's fashion philosophy. It should be noted that Kawakubo's use of pale pink in the 1970s design might not be as innocent as we assume. This is because pink in 1970s Japan was not seen as universally girlish as it is today. Rather than the single color pink, it is red juxtaposed with white that was previously considered the dominant girl's color combination in Japan. Hello Kitty, often known as a paragon of Japan's modern kawaii or cute culture, was originally rendered in white and red. Okay, yeah. When she was first introduced in 1974, until red was replaced by pink in the late 1990s. And even today, 
Hello Kitty is strongly associated with the color pink. And similarly, Little Twin Stars are characters created by Sanrio, the same company that created Hello Kitty. The hair color of the boy and girl, Twin Stars, which served as a kind of inf um, informal gender coding, changed from brown and blonde in 1975 when they were first introduced or created to blue and pink in 1980. And even today, this gender coding through their hair color um, still, still remains intact. Oh. <laughs> yes. So conforming to uh, the blue for a boy and the pink for a girl stereotype, indicating a shift in preferred girl's color in modern Japan. So pink is increasingly associated with cuteness and little girls today. In fashion, this girlish or childlike connotation of pink often blends with flared skirts and light fabrics. <laughs> okay, yes. Ballerina turned fashion designer Chika Kisada perpetuate the idea of pink as a girl's nostalgic dream through her designs today. Her eponymous fashion brand Chika Kisada leans towards aesthetics that are girlish and youthful, and quite significantly, the brand's key color is pink. Chika Kisada's 2017 fall winter collection titled Photographic Memory, oops, Photographic Memories is inspired by the image of one's girlhood, clothes that a girl would wear when she was seven years old. The combination of the simplicity, naughtiness, and innocent sensitivity of a seven-year-old girl and the elegance of an adult is captured in pale pink and blue, tools and lace, and draping. But above everything, Pale pink symbolizes the nostalgic memory of childhood. It perhaps also relates to Kisada's own childhood memory of wanting to become a ballerina. And as some of you might know, the ballerina has a strongly girlish connotation in, in modern Japanese popular culture. And almost always she's associated with pale pink when she's um, represented in such cultures. For her next collection, she had a focus on magenta pink. The collection is inspired by dancer and choreographer Michael Clark, who in Kisada's words, is one of the pioneers to have merged ballet and punk. According to this statement of strong image, deeper shades of pink are used, as you can see in these images, and are making a pleasant contrast to the full a winter collection with its reflection upon a nostalgic girlhood rendered in pastel shades. At the cherry blossom seen from the tale of Genji that we have talked earlier suggest, pink was not exclusively a color for women in Japan. Japanese boy pop idols and groups from Hikaru Genji in the 1980s to SMAP in the 1990s and Arashi and Kiss My Foot in the 2000s frequently have been dre dressed in pink on stage and in other occasions, creating a new equation between the color and attractive young men. Since the, since the heterosexual appeal of these young male celebrities lies in their well-groomed, boyish, and un often unthreatening charm and aesthetics in Japan, as indicated by these two currently popular male actors who are obviously pictured here dressed in pink. And their use of pink seems unsurprising. In contemporary Japanese fashion culture, this association is reinforced in men's fashion magazines. Men's Nono is one of the most well-known young men's fashion magazines in Japan. Before the official launch of the magazine as a monthly publication in 1986, 
a pilot special edition was published in 1985, whose popularity made the magazine to be published um, monthly afterwards. Significantly, this issue featured a 17-page spread titled, I Want to Wear Pink. <laughs> the text that accompanies the spread, such as pink has been described as a color for girls, a difficult, difficult color to wear, and it's not true that pink is childish, themselves indicate the common perception of the color at the time in Japan, and this also brings to mind the transformation that Little Twin Stars went through just a few years uh, before the, the publication of the magazine. But the magazine continues to suggest that pink is also wearable with the boyish sweetness and gentleness of a mature man. And items such as a pair of pink trousers, a pink jacket, a pink scarf, and a pair of pink socks were featured. And this is my absolute favorite, that a pale pink mohair sweater was <laughs> worn by now famous actor um, Hiroshi Abe when he was just starting as an exclusive model for the magazine. The cover of the magazine is predominantly pink too, as you can see in this slide. A medium close shot of Abe smiling, wearing a pale pink scarf on a pastel blue jacket and so make a very favorable connection between youthful and attractive masculinity and the color pink. Significantly, the magazine featured pink again in 2017, reflecting the status of pink as a color of the day. It is also reported that fashion items in pink are increasingly popular among Japanese young men around this time following the popularity of pink iPhones among men in the country, like this one. <laughs> the current vogue of pink is also visible in men's high fashion. Sakai is a fashion brand of designer Chitose Abe, who launched it in 1999 after eight years working with the Junya Watanabe collection of Comme des and Abe launched its male label in 2009. Sakai's 2017 Spring Summer Men's Collection features pink extensively. What is particularly eye-catching are the brand's dusky pink suits and long coats. Oh. And very luckily, this beautiful um, pink suit is now exhibited as part of this awesome pink exhibition at the museum here. So if you haven't seen it, you should go and see it. Well, Sakai's men's items juxtapose classical male elegance with boys' cheekiness in men's fashion, concept often considered as opposite, and yet the one that was kind of echoing what um, men's non-pink edition was talking about or articulating in 1985. The brand's use of the misty shade of pink while downplaying girlishness signals sassy youthfulness and a gentle suavity and make the garment stand out, just like how Lady Murasaki depicted the pink robe of Prince Genji under the blossoming cherry trees nearly a thousand years ago. As Japanese pop idols, male pop idols, Sakai and men's fashion magazine indicate, pink is not just girlish or erotic, but also a color that can signal both boishness and mature masculinity with a shade of elegance. So in conclusion, in Japanese culture, the color pink's association with two popular flowers in ancient times, the Japanese apricot and the cherry blossom, mark marked its early entry in the Japanese palettes for both women and men. In modern Japan, pink represents many seemingly dichotomous concepts, such as innocence and eroticism, spring and renewal, but also mortality, girlish and masculine, and so on. Whether it connotes as a sense of glamour, eroticism, girlish nostalgia, or boyish elegance, Pink always stands out from other colors, making it special. 
the meanings of pink in Japanese culture may have changed over time, as we have seen today. But what remains unchanged is their love of the color. Thank you. <laughs>